Hi, and welcome to this overview of air pollution. Air pollution is a major public health issue. In this video, we'll discuss outdoor air pollution, what it is, types of pollutants, and sources. We'll also take a look at ways to reduce air pollution and talk about how air quality is monitored. We'll then talk about indoor air pollution, why it's a problem, sources of pollution, and ways to reduce it. But first, what is air pollution? Air pollution occurs when the air is contaminated with any chemical, physical, or biological agent. It is the world's largest environmental health risk, leading to millions of deaths around the world each year. Although anyone can be affected by air pollution, people who are most vulnerable include the elderly, children, and people with chronic lung or heart disease. Let's take a look at outdoor air pollution first. The outdoor air can be polluted by natural sources or human sources. Natural or biogenic sources of air pollution include pollen, bushfires, or dust from deserts. Pollution of the air from human sources, also called anthropogenic air pollution, is commonly due to industries, burning of fossil fuels, and the use of motor vehicles. There are hundreds of different types of air pollutants. Let's take a quick look at a few important ones. Particulate matter is a complex mixture of small particles and liquid droplets that are mainly from industry or motor vehicle exhausts. Dust storms or bushfires can also generate large amounts of PM. Particulate matter is classified according to the diameter of the particles. The health effects of particulate matter are mostly due to particles that are less than 10 micrometers in diameter. These particles can reach the deepest parts of the lungs and enter the bloodstream. Nitrogen dioxide is usually formed when fuel is burned at a high temperature. Common sources are the exhaust of motor vehicles, industry, power plants, and gas stovetops. Carbon monoxide is colorless and odorless and is formed when the carbon in fuel doesn't burn completely. The main source of carbon monoxide is motor vehicle exhausts and therefore, carbon monoxide levels are very high in areas with heavy traffic congestion. Other sources include industry, incinerators, and bushfires. Sulfur dioxide is a gas that can be produced when sulfur-containing fuels are burnt during industrial processes like in power plants and refineries. Lead is produced mostly as a result of metal and ore processing. Motor vehicle exhaust used to be a major source of lead pollution. However, regulatory efforts to reduce lead in fuel has led to a massive reduction in lead emissions. Ozone is a gas that is not emitted directly to the air, but is formed as a result of sunlight acting on other chemicals in the air. Ground level ozone is a pollutant, whereas ozone that occurs naturally in the upper atmosphere has a protective function. There are hundreds of other air pollutants that can lead to adverse health effects. Okay, so what are the health effects? Exposure to air pollution can result in a wide range of short and long-term health effects. The health effect will depend on factors like the type of pollutant, concentration, length of exposure, and individual characteristics of the person exposed to it. It can range from minor symptoms like irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat, to more severe conditions like heart and lung disease or cancer. It can also lead to increased hospital admissions and an increase in death rates. In 2012, outdoor air pollution was estimated to have caused 3.7 million deaths around the world. In addition to causing health effects, air pollution can also lead to damage to property, reduced visibility, and have other effects on the environment, like acid rain. What can we do to reduce air pollution? Well, there are many different ways to reduce air pollution. These require the combined efforts of governments, industry, and individuals. For example, governments can take actions like developing standards, regulating the level of pollutants in the air, developing policies to reduce environmental impact of development, and using clean energy sources. Industry can take steps like reducing their emissions to the environment, taking measures to prevent pollution accidents, or developing technology to reduce emissions, like electric cars. At an individual level, reducing the reliance on fossil fuels can be achieved with actions like walking, using public transport, or choosing energy-efficient means of living and transportation. Let's have a look now at how air quality is monitored. Most countries have national laws and regulations to control air pollution. These usually set out air quality standards that must be adhered to. These standards are set out by each country and will depend on factors like technological feasibility, economic considerations, capacity for air quality management, political and social factors. These standards specify the concentration of a number of selected pollutants called criteria pollutants that are allowed in the air. 
A useful way to track air pollution against the national standards is a measure called the Air Quality Index, AQI. This is a simple numerical or color-coded representation of how clean the air is. There are different ways of calculating the AQI, but it's essentially a measure of what the level of a pollutant is compared to what the national standard is. Now that we've had a look at outdoor air pollution, let's have a look at indoor air pollution. Now, although the indoor air quality is affected by outdoor air, the quality of indoor air can be significantly different. This is because there could be many sources of indoor pollutants. The most common source of indoor pollution in the world is solid fuels, like wood, charcoal, dung, or crop waste that are used for cooking or heating. Around the world, over 3 billion people use simple stoves or open fires to cook or heat their homes. These methods are inefficient and can lead to the generation of pollutants like particulate matter, which can result in concentrations indoors of up to 100 times more than that of the outdoor air. Other sources include tobacco smoke, chemicals released from building materials, furnishings and household products, pesticides, asbestos containing insulation and products used for household cleaning. Factors like inadequate ventilation and in some cases heat and humidity can worsen indoor air pollution. Exposure to indoor air pollution can lead to health effects similar to those caused by outdoor air pollution. In 2012, the World Health Organization estimated that 4.3 million people died due to illness that could be attributed to household air pollution caused by the use of solid fuel. There are several ways to reduce indoor air pollution, including controlling it at the source. This includes actions like changing from solid fuels to cleaner and more energy efficient solutions like biogas, electricity or solar power, improving cooking devices and reducing the need for open fire heating by constructing energy efficient housing making improvements to the indoor environment. This may include increasing ventilation through windows or chimneys or other design features like having the kitchen separate from the house. Behavioral changes like properly maintaining stoves and chimneys can reduce the accumulation of pollutants. Exposure to indoor pollution can also be reduced with actions such as using pot lids to conserve heat and minimize cooking time. So that's a look at air pollution, an important public health issue. We've had a look at outdoor air pollution, different types of pollutants and their sources, ways to reduce pollution, and how air quality is monitored. We've also talked about indoor air pollution, why it's a problem, sources of pollution, and ways to reduce it. 